Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. So it's a it's a new year. I should have probably done this a couple weeks ago, but we kind of got uh stuck into stuck into some carving and had a good piece to work on. So this is probably delayed by a week. I'm just going to go over the equipment that I use primarily at the moment for carving. So this is it here. We'll start off with the most important piece and get it off the table. The Azito rotary tool. So this is a really basic instrument, it comes with a flex shaft, the entire kit was about $50 Australian and yeah, what can I say, it goes from about 8,000 to 35,000 RPM I sit it on zero, well on the slowest setting at all times, pretty much so it's sitting around the 8,000 unloaded uh, yeah, collet size, it accommodates the small ones and it accommodates the larger, larger 3 mil you can see that I use pretty much all the same thickness. This is the only one that I use in the larger, or actually no, cutting disc. But all the Novas and everything are the smaller version, so... Most most rotary tools should be able to accommodate that in Dremels, so... Don't worry about it too much, just as long as you've got a flex shaft, it makes it a lot easier. Some people go ahead and mount their rotary tool, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I like the dexterity of using this like it's a pen. And you can get a lot more carving and artistic work done that way. So that's the rotary tool. As far as bits go, I used to, in my last video for my equipment, I used to use diamond coated tips for a lot of my cutting. Now I'm using diamond sintered tips. Well, burrs. And these, these here are a kit of just really hard and fast cutting ones. They're about an 80 grit for the whole set, just a few different shapes. I use that when I'm doing something where I've got like a whole heap of something to remove and I don't really care about chipping or anything like that. Those will burn through it in seconds. This is the kit that I recommend for most if you don't want to use the diamond coated bits and you want to go to sintered. So this has the full range of grits. So it starts at about 80 and ends up at about 350, 400. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good span. It's got everything in between and yeah, they cut incredibly fast. These are incredibly nice to get a bit of a finish before going to the polishing stages. The polishing stages, I use these bad boys just here. So these are actually quite old now. So Nova Tips, made by Diamond Pacific in the US. They're a little hard to get around the world without forking out a lot of money. Same with the Sintered. As, as soon as you venture outside of the US, some of this stuff can get quite expensive and quite hard to get a hold of. But these Nova tips, this set of four at least for Opal is the minimum. It really, you, you really need to be able to end with this 3000. And the 280 is pretty good time to pick up straight after your last sintered bit. So 280, 600, 1200 and 3000. You'll see these in almost any video where I'm polishing up an Opal. Small little diamond coated cutting disc. I will try to track down a sintered one at some point, because it would last a little bit longer. I just throw these out after a couple uses. So I'm still using cerium oxide on felt. So this is just the felt tip with the residual cerium oxide from the latest polish. It's it's a good all-rounder. For boulder opal it gets a little bit tricky. Cerium oxide's probably not the best, but in general, cerium oxide for most opals that I've played with is definitely the way to go. I'd stay away from it for Ethiopian opal as well because it will actually, yeah, it'll absorb it into its structure, which is not great. Uh, in terms of dopping the stones, so for instant dops, as I like to call it, I use just a super glue. All my dop sticks are pretty much chopsticks of various lengths and sizes. There's a whole heap of them sitting over here. I've got round chopsticks, I've got I don't know, oblong ones, I use the square ends. Chopsticks are really a great way to go. Otherwise, I sometimes use pencils. So, basically anything wooden. Sometimes I'll use a screw if I really need a stone to be dopped. Like a tiny stone, I'll use a smaller screw, tiny screw, glue it on there and then screw it into a larger piece of wood. So that'll help give you a bigger handle. In general, I will dop with this 5 minute epoxy, Araldite two part, mix it up, dop a whole heap of stones, let them set. That takes about a day to set, or at least to a point where it won't just drop off without a lot of effort. The super glue on the other hand is instant, 
but if it gets left in water too long it will come off and getting them off the dock is just basically soaking them in water so you can understand why the super glue is only like a short term hold because it will weaken over time so that's that I also like to have this small little scale it's not the most accurate thing ever I do calibrate it every now and then with the calibration weight but all in all it goes okay small fine permanent texture comes in handy a lot I hold the stone in front of a light like a lamp and use this to just mark any sand spots any cracks anything that I need to cut any high high sections or unevenness I'll highlight it with this and then cut it off it's get, it's really good if you've got a small pit or a uh, scratch or something and you chuck this in there this will actually bleed into that crack and you'll know it's gone once that color that texture disappears I've also got a white paint pen that I use occasionally if the black if I'm working a if I'm lucky enough to work a fairly dark opal then I do have this white paint stuff uh, apart from that we've got a caliper it's quite quite handy I like it because it switches between millimeters and inches helps with the American American crowd and we've got ourselves a little loop now this one is nice because it's got two little lights one for each magnif magnification so it's it's really nice it's it comes in handy a lot when I'm looking for really fine little imperfections that don't get highlighted enough in a torch it's good enough to see any kind of tiny sand or crack or imperfection in general and that's pretty much that's pretty much it if you've got all of this you're pretty pretty good to go apart from that I've got my splatter guard which isn't really a piece of equipment but splatter guard I use masks I also have ear protection because this thing sits right above my right next to my left ear and above my left shoulder so it's not the loudest thing ever but it is loud enough to cause me cause me issues I reckon and I like my hearing I like listening to music so I'd like to keep it as intact as possible but yeah apart from that that's really all you'll see all you'll see me using for the start of 2021 I'll update this again next year probably at the start of each year similar to my opal countdown and the best opals cut at the end of a year I'll do this at the start of the year and if I move on to any kind of flat lapping or anything like that I'm sure my equipment list I'll have to make one for each different technique but at the moment I'm just carving and this is really all I use on a regular basis you can probably get away with I don't know just picking one of these two so maybe you don't want to use this maybe you're not slicing very often maybe you don't really care about the weight so much then yeah you can see that the tools that you really need are not very not very much it's a pretty low barrier to entry flex shaft with a rotor tool at the end of it spinning motor as long as you can spin these things at the right speed then you then you're good to go just get yourself some water and the nova tips I still haven't found a substitute for the nova tips yet trust me I look I'm still looking I mean a lot of these I've got plenty of bags of things like this little nova tip replacements but none of them have none of them have cut it they just don't get the same effect it's really this one in particular this 280 grit nova the black one which you can see is a bit weird shaped because I've used it so much this thing I just can't find a replacement for these other ones I can kind of replace with some of the cheaper Chinese ones because I can get a polish but getting it to that stage where it's a nice smooth piece I just can't do it without this Nova tip at the moment so yeah they really are unbeatable at this current stage I just can't find anything better but yeah that's my equipment if you need any any help in kind of sourcing this I do have the Facebook group people are giving me a lot of links to sites that suit them so I've got good websites for finding Nova tips in Europe in Australia in the UK all over the place so we're we're trying to get a nice document going so feel free to swing by there we've got people from all around the world they can help you find some stuff and yeah then there's the channel to learn how to how to use some of the stuff so 
stick around. We'll jump into some more carving and hopefully we have a good year. Yeah.